Welcome back, taking a break from the chapter seven work. Instead, we're gonna be doing some super review for all the chapters. These were given to me by the teacher's assistant. Let's go. Oops. Okay. Mass Incorporated produces and sells freestanding quilt frames. In budgeting for production needs, the company requires that 10% of the next month's sales be on hand at the end of each month. Budgeted sales of quilt frames over the next four months are, and they're given to us, their budgeted units, September, October, November, December. I don't know why it's done like that. Sometimes I just copy correctly. What? Insert. Here we go. December sales is 25,000, 32,000, 56,000, and 48,000. In this case, we need to find the budgeted production for October. Given that we have this information, we need to know what we know. So what do we know from this? Let's see. We know that the company requires 10%. Okay. Requires 10% of next month's sales be on hand. 10% of next month's sales be on hand. What else do we know? At the end of the okay, budgeted sales of quilt frames over the next four months are, and they are given to us. So in that case, it'll be budgeted unit and sales for September, October, November, December, which are, oops, which are this, Sept, October, November and December. Using this, we gotta realize the project, and this over here is 25,000. This is 32,000. For November, it'll be 56,000. And for December, it'll be 48,000. Good. So we need to get the production for October. The but that's what the question is asking. It's asking what the budgeted production for October would be. Well, we know that the budgeted production is equal to budgeted sales plus budgeted ending inventory minus the budgeted beginning inventory. We'll put this together and it'll look something like this, 32K. Because we're on October, okay? Plus, open parentheses, close, open, open bracket, open parentheses, 56,000. Times 0 0.1, close parentheses, minus, open parentheses, 32,000. Times 0 0.1 close parentheses, close bracket. And the reason we have the 56,000 here is because it requires 10% of the next month's sales, which is November, 56,000. And then we plug this into the calculator, it should give us this, 34,400. And this is the budgeted production, 33,400. The next one, I am going to be giving some non-mathematical ones as well. So let's continue on to the ones that are mathematical for now and just move on. No, the exam had a bunch of true-false questions, so let's do them. I'll begrudgingly do them. If a company gets the sales forecast wrong, which of the following budgets will also be incorrect? And the answer is all of them, okay? D, reason being is that 
It all starts from the sales forecast as what they think it's going to be. And if they think it's going to be something that's incorrect, then everything will go either over or under budgeted. That's just the way it works. Up next, we have number four and number three. Which of the following is a suggested source for forecasting sales for a new business? Is it A, industry projections, B, market data, C, both industry projections and market data, or D, neither industry projections nor market data? It's both of them. This is how they make their predictions, using both the industry projections and the market data. If you're not using them, then you're not making a proper prediction. So just so you guys know, it's, it's C here. Which of the following does not appear in other cash disbursement section of the cash budget? And that would be depreciation on factory equipment because depreciation is not a cash problem. Depreciation has to do with them breaking down over time, but there's no check that you sign that says, oh, it, we're going to depreciate it after X year, unless you have an Apple phone. But other than that, it's not there. Up next, gross profit on a pro forma income statement is calculated as. Is it the budgeted sales revenue minus contribution margin? Budgeted sales revenue budget and cost of goods sold? Budgeted sales revenue minus product cost and period cost or none of these? The answer is it's the formula. It's budgeted sales revenue minus the budgeted cost of goods sold, which I typically write as this. If you have a different way to write it, then go for it. This is just how I write it. It's B. All right. Now let's look at some chapter six stuff because that was simple enough. And that would be this one. Budget assists managers, which are the following aspects of management. Is it planning, controlling, evaluating, or all of them? That's all. It's all of them. Because the point of managerial accounting is to help managers make decisions, control things, and evaluate the position of the company. The next question involves this. Which of the following is not a characteristic of a top-down budget environment? Is it A, executive management creates the budget. B, this approach is referred to as participative budgeting. C, the budget is pushed down toward the organization. Or D, all of these answer choices are characteristics of a top-down budget environment. In the case of B, this top-down budget environments do not have participation as they come from the top and they don't really care what the bottom has to say, they just give it to you. Okay, they just give it to you. The answer is B. That's incorrect. That is a down, that is a bottom up or down top if you want to use incorrect grammar. <laughs> that sounds so mean. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Up next is this one. Hold on. Did I, did I do it correctly? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, oops. Delete. Copy. Sorry about that, there's some data there, but it's better to do that than do nothing. Okay, let's get back to work. Which the following is a disadvantage of participative budgeting. And we answered this one in a previous problem, but just so we can do the review, the disadvantage is that it is a time consuming process, but it also, managers may also pad the budget. Therefore, it's important to read all the questions and you'll know that it is C, both it is time consuming and that managers may pad it. Number four, which of the following is not a characteristic of participative budgeting? And that, and that is that it is the most efficient method. That's incorrect. The reason it is not the most efficient. The reason it's not the most efficient method of budget preparation is because participative budgeting takes a lot of time, as it involves multiple people coming together to talk about the situation. And B, the issue with it is that sometimes there is corruption. Sometimes the managers want to pad the budget to make themselves look good. And that's why it is not the most efficient one. 
Now let's get to some true false ones. Okay. These will be fun. The master budget is an example of a flexible budget. The answer is this is false. And the reason is that master budget is static budget. Up next, when a budget being used is a static budget, the difference between actual results and budgeted results are referred to as budget slack. The answer to this is false. Okay. Variance. Give me a second. False. Variance is either favorable or unfavorable, indicating OI effect. Effect on operating income. That's why. Number four, a variance is. Sorry. I got a message from someone this from one of the students. Copy paste. A favorable budget. A favorable variance that increased the flexible budget amount relative to the static budget amount. And the answer is false for this one. A lot of these are false. Weird. And that is a variance is called a favorable variance. A a favorable variance is variance that increases operating income relative to budgeted amount. Number five, the favorable variance is a variance that increases the flexible budget. Is this correct? No, it is false. Okay. And the reason it is false is because a favorable variance is a variance that increases operating income relative to the budgeted amount. I swear I just said this. I just repeated the same question. I'm so sorry. Number five. An unfavorable variance is a variance that increases operating income relative to the budgeted amount. That is true. Number six. A flexible budget is a budget based on the budgeted sales volume at the beginning of the period. And this one is false. And the reason it being is that a flex budget is based on actual sales volume during period. Seven, the difference between actual sales volume and budgeted sales has nothing to do with the price and quantity variance. Is that true? Yes or no? And the answer is it's true. Okay, we have one, we have two more true or false questions and then we'll move on. Because true or false, while it makes up a huge chunk of the exam, is not the most intellectually stimulating. In fact, if you know how to do the math, then this is much easier. But let's go for it. This is false. The flexible budget variance for direct labor is separate in two components, a direct labor rate variance and a direct labor quantity variance. That is incorrect. Okay, it is separated into direct labor rate variance and direct labor efficiency variance. Okay, that's what it's actually separated into. And then last true or false question just to put an end to this misery. If a company's workforce consists of several new hires, then their lack of training could lead to an unfavorable direct labor efficiency variance. And the answer to this one is that it's true. All right. Good to know. Up next, a static budget is one based on... Is one that... Let's see. Is based on an actual sales volume achieved during the period, is developed on a single level of expected output, is one component of operating budget, is always used to compare with the actual results. And the other, and the answer is that it's developed for a single level of expected output. 
I don't think I need to say this, but all companies monitor the performance either monthly, weekly, or daily, depending on their situation. That's a non-question. 12. The variance is labeled as what exactly it's going to be labeled as favorable or unfavorable, the F or U thing. The, way, the best way to remember it is you just want to say F you to whoever asks you that question. That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> An unfavorable variance is a variance that it's the answer is it decreases operating income relative to the budgeted amount. We've already been talking about how it decreases operating income and it decreases it because it's unfavorable because it's a negative number. All sales differences between flexible budget and the actual performance must result from and the answer is operations. Okay. The way things are handled, the way things are managed will inevitably affect how how any differences that you're seeing in this case. 15. Sales volume variance is influenced most heavily by the actions of the what exactly? Is it the budget committee, the operations personnel, the sales and marketing personnel, or the executive of the company? And the answer is the sales and marketing personnel because the salesmen, the saleswomen, and the marketing personnel are the ones who influence the sales volume. Uh, the best way to look at it is you'll look at the people in charge of sales at, say, a company. They're the ones selling you things, not the higher-up guys. They're the ones pocketing the money because they took a financial risk in order to make the company in the first place. So kudos to them. They got a sweet gig, assuming it doesn't fall on their face. All right, we have a math one. Good. Assume the static budget sales revenue is $69,000 and the flexible budget sales revenue is $70,000. If the actual sales price is $6 and the budgeted sales price is $6.50, what is the sales volume variance? All right. That one is actually really easy, depressingly. Let's go with a... Just stay with red. No, let's go with a different color. Let's go with a really light green. In this case, we know that sales volume variance, or SVV, is equal to the flexible budget minus the static budget. Therefore, it'll be seven, 70,000 minus 69,000, and that'll be equal to 1,000. And since this is a positive number, we know that it is favorable. Let's move on to the next question. But first, let's get rid of this side. I think you've had enough time to copy this down. Okay. The next one is question 17. That'll be great. Okay, it'll always be great. We just need to hurry this up because I got to drive soon. The difference between the static budget sales revenue and the flexible budget revenue, the flexible budget sales revenue is referred to as the, and the correct answer is the sales volume variance. All right, up next is what is the equation for direct materials price variance? Okay. The, the equation is this, direct materials price variance is equal to a Q purchased times amount purchased minus sales purchased. And these are this is the simpler way to do the chapter six homework if you want the faster math. I just did it the hard way because, well, because it's the way the book was telling me to do it. And it's easier to just use the book's way when you when you want to go faster. If you want to just, you know, the, the easier way to do it, this is how you do it. If the actual price of direct material is ten dollars per unit, while the standard price of direct material is eleven, hold on. The direct material price variance will be unfavorable, okay? Because what we actually, because our price here was eleven and the actual price was ten, we the company lose ten dollars. We the company lose money, so it's unfavor. So it's I bet it is favorable because this is the actual purchased. It's always sales price minus actual purchase, and we know that this is a better price because we actually saved a dollar. Therefore, it is favorable. My apologies. I misspoke. 
Number 20, if the actual price of the direct materials is $200 and the standard price of the direct materials is $180, the correct answer here is that the direct materials price variance will be unfavorable. In this case, it's because 180 minus 200 is equal to negative 20, which is an unfavorable outcome. You don't want to lose 20 bucks. I, I think that's common sense, right? No one wants to lose 20 bucks. Another math one, thankfully. In this case, backyard creations purchased seven dozen feet of copper during a tubing at a price of two dollars and seventy cents per foot, and used seventy-two hundred feet during the period. The standard price of the copper tubing was two dollars and fifty cents per foot. What is the backyard creations or material price variance for the period? Well, you see, this will be relatively easy. It should be relatively easy anyways. Let's do it. It'll be, the formula is this. To, sometimes my mouse gives up on me. I'm so sorry that happened. So in this case, it's going to be the sales price, standard price. So this is gonna be the actual price. minus the sales price multiplied by the actual quantity, by the sales quantity. Wait, no. Let me get the formulary sheet out just so I can double check it real quickly so that I don't make a mistake. Because the last thing I wanna do is misinform you. That would be really bad and unprofessional of me. Okay, let me pull it up. The formula in this instance is this. We are looking for the direct material price variance for the period. The direct material price variance is a Q multiplied by AP minus SP. Okay, the actual quantity in this case is 7,000. So that's what they purchased, multiplied by the actual price, which is $2.70. And then subtracted by the sales price, $2.50. And this will give you 1400. However, because the number here will give you something that is, however, because the actual price is greater than the sales price, we know that it is unfavorable. It means we just spent more money than we really should have. And then I'll get this last one done for chapter six and then call it a day. Well, not a day, I have to get, when I get back, I'll continue. Johnston Manufacturing Company purchased 14,000 switches to make 6,000 units. The standard allows for two switches per unit. Company actually used 12,200 to produce the 6,000 units. Johnson budgeted 75 cents per switch, but because they received a discount for purchasing more than 10,000 switches, they received a discount of five cents per switch and paid 70 cents each. What is Johnson's direct materials quantity variance for the period? And these are the choices that were given. The Because we were looking for the direct material quantity variance, let's pull up the nice little book here. Direct material quantity variance is as sales price multiplied by the actual quantity subtracted by the sales quantity. Good. So in this case, it's going to be 75 cents multiplied by 12,000 minus 12,500. And this will give us three, seven, five unfavorable because the actual, the sales quantity is, because this gives you a negative number, because this gives you a negative number, it's unfavorable. That'll be the end for this. This is just chapter five and six review. And then I'll be doing the chapter seven review after this. And finally, we will conclude with the chapter seven homework. Have a nice day. Quick addendum, we're getting back to chapter seven review. Let's just clear all the ink.
A. Excellent. So this a. before we continue with chapter seven, I need to give you guys the three steps, uh, the four steps to calculate activity-based product costs. So to calculate an activity-based product cost, we have step one, which is identify activities. Okay. Okay. Which is the hardest part according to the professor. Step two is to develop activity cost pools. Develop activity cost pools. And then step three is to calculate activity cost pool rates. And finally, step four is to allocate costs to products or services. Okay. And then I could say that step five is just solve it, but we're going to be doing that anyways. The formulas for this section are the activity rate is equal to the total activity cost pool resources divided by the total activity driver volume. That's the activity rate. The other one, the allocated cost formula, is equal to the activity rate. multiplied by the activity driver consumption. And then to calculate the total product cost, to calculate the unit product cost, we need to do the total direct material cost. Direct material cost. You add the total direct labor cost. Then you add the allocated activity cost. Afterwards, you add the second allocated activity cost. And this will give you your total product cost. From there, you divide it by the number of units produced. And with that, you'll get the unit product cost. Now that these steps have been explained, it's time to answer some questions. Let's begin. Now, before we begin, I might as well do some true or false questions just so that we can all see this in the context of a question. Therefore, we're going to open Notepad. Let's begin. An activity-based analysis that focuses only on manufacturing overhead improves gap-based financial statements. This is false. And the reason for that is because an activity-based analysis that focuses only on manufacturing overhead does not improve gap-based financial statements. Up next, we have this next one. For unit level activities, the total level of activity performed varies proportionally with the number of units produced. This time, it is true. Up next, number four. Identifying the activities performed in the organization is the most time-consuming part of implementing the activity-based costing system. 
I apparently also pasted the answer. It is true. Up next, we have number five. The calculation to allocate the cost to products or services is to divide the activity driver consumption by the activity rate. This is false. The calculation is to multiply the activity rate by the activity driver consumption. Okay. Activity rate by activity driver consumption. Excellent. Now we get some non-true or false, but still multiple choice questions. Beginning with this one, the main reason for generating new information provided by activity-based costing is to, and the answer is help the managers make better decisions. If we know that much, the rest makes more sense. Up next, we have this next one here. In an activity-based costing system, okay, which of the following is not a category in which activities are classified, and that is the factory level? Okay, that makes sense. In an activity-based costing system, which of the following is not a character in which activities are classified? However, with these case, because it is the same question, however, we have different answers. It's also the variable level. The variable level and the factory level are not classified in this set situation at all. You don't need to classify them. Everything else you do. Activities that are performed all at once on groups of projects is classified as the batch level activity. Oops, the batch level activity. Okay, up next we have this one. Activities that support the products or services a company provides is classified as a what? And the answer is a product level activity. The, the sad truth with a lot of these questions that involve multiple choice is many of them, you don't actually look up and you just kind of have to memorize them. So which of the following is not the product or service related activity? And they give us different levels per se. In this case, the levels are unit level, product level, batch level, and customer level. And the one is customer level because the customer is not making anything. The company is. The customer is just giving us their, their money. Let us continue. We finally now have a mathematical problem. So let us rejoice. Estimated costs for activity cost pools and other items are as follows. Machine is 800,000. Assembling is 200,000. And advertising is 450,000. Inspecting and testing is 175,000. And then ask for the total estimated overhead. And below are the answers possible. To get this, we need to do some simple math. Okay. Very simple math. The good old addition and subtraction. Let us begin. It is the machining, which is the first one we take place, is 800,000. Excellent. Then we have assembling. So we're going to add it. In this case, it's 200,000. Afterwards, we have advertisement. And this will be added as this will actually not be added because it is not necessary for the activity cost pool. So therefore, we can ignore this one. So we're just going to sit right here. Ignore. Afterwards, we, need, we do need to add the inspecting and testing. The reason being is that inspecting and testing, assembling, and machinery all happens at the activity level, okay, when we're making stuff, the activity cost pulse. Advertising doesn't affect the item at all. Therefore, we must add from here 
be a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars what this will give us is this thing eight hundred thousand plus two hundred thousand plus a hundred and seventy five thousand is equal to one million a hundred and seventy five thousand there we go good old math problems how I miss you up next which solution I mean which of the following is the most time-consuming part of implementing an activity-based costing system and it's identifying activities I gave this one away earlier Assume that activity cost totals $180,000. The activity produced an average of 40 units per batch, and the number of batches produced is 9,000. Calculate the activity rate. So for this one, we are going to need the activity rate formula that I gave out earlier, which is that the activity rate is equal to the total activity cost pool resources divided by the total activity driver volume. Now that we know this, we can do this. We have the activity costs are equal to $180,000. And we know that we have total activity driver volume is 9,000 batches, okay? From here, we divide these and we get $20 per batch. Therefore, the correct answer is A. And the next problem, When using an activity-based costing system, which of the following is the formula for allocating costs to products or services? I already gave it away. To allocate costs to products or services, the formula is the activity rate multiplied by the driver rate by the driver consumption. Okay, it's A. Up next, we have 16 over here. Ah, yes, 16. Brandon Consulting Company is headquartered in Atlanta and has a branch offices in Nashville and Birmingham. Brandon uses an activity-based costing system. The Atlanta office has its costs for administration and legal allocated to the two branch offices. Brandon has provided the following information. Activity cost, pool, cost driver, costs. These are actually two different sections. Administration percent of time devoted to branch, legal and hours spent on legal research. And the costs for these are $700,000, $138,000 is the percent of time which is a new section altogether for whatever reason this did not copy over correctly so what I'm going to do is scan well not scan is just show you what it looks like when typed so it'll be activity cost pool and then it'll be cost driver and I'll separate them with semicolon and then costs. Afterwards, the table will then go to a new line and it'll be administration, semicolon, then it's percent of time devoted to a branch, and then here, another semicolon, and it will be $700,000.
Then for legal, it's going to be hours spent on legal research. And for here, it's going to be $138,000. And then, of course, we have a new table, which will have a new set. So on the, on the right here, it's going to be Nashville and Birmingham. Then up here, we're going to make a few spaces so that over here I can put time, percentage of time devoted to brunch, semicolon, hours spent on legal research. For, for Nashville, it's going to be 80% and the hours spent are 18,000 hours. Afterwards, for Birmingham, it's going to be 20%, and the hours spent on legal research is 6,000 hours. Now that this is written correctly, I'm not sure why it didn't copy correctly, but sometimes it just acts funny. I need to know how much of Atlanta's cost will be allocated to Birmingham. Now that we know this, let us continue. Okay. Overall, this question doesn't seem too hard at all. Not compared to chapter 5, question 9, which honestly was longer than it needed to be after I realized a quick mistake. The allocated cost is equal to the activity rate multiplied by activity driver consumption. Now that we know this formula, let's do it for administration. It'll be $700,000 multiplied by 0 0.2, which is 20%. And this will give us 140 thousand dollars afterwards we have legal and for this case it'll be a hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars multiplied by six thousand divided by open parentheses eighteen thousand plus 6,000. You plug this into your calculator and you will get $34,500. And now to get the solution, we need to add these two together. So $140,000 plus $34,500 is equal to $174,500. And that is A, or which is $174,500. Simple enough. I think so. It realistically wasn't too hard. It just took a few more steps than one. And that's the case. The, a lot of these problems are really easy if you take the time to think about it. If you just rush in, you're not going to have a good time. So I have to stick with red. I'm skipping the blue for this one. And then for the last question for the review for this is a chapter 7 review by the way how much of atlanta's costs will be allocated to birmingham oops we don't need this last section we just need 17 and up those activities that create the product the consumer wants to buy as are known as value added activities so see 
that is everything for the chapter for the final exam review document i will be adding the three extra questions that the professor gave us towards the end as a part of this however those will be done well they will be done here but it's going to be a little bit longer so i'll cut the rest and then come back when i continue i'm back had to do the actual problems before i actually showed them how, to, how they were done so for problem number one it's a pretty simple one actually acme corporation uses twenty thousand pounds of material to make eighteen thousand bottles of glue the standard allows 1.2 pounds of material at a cost of three dollars per pound for each bottle of, G of glue acme's direct material quantity variance is we know based off earlier sections in this assignment that direct material quantity variance what happened Direct material interesting I know you guys probably can't see it but to me it's that it keeps flickering quantity variance Why is it doing this? Understood. Quantity variance is equal to it is S S P over the sales price multiplied by the sales quantity. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. If you guys see the flickering, I'm very sorry. I'm going to try my best to remove it. Minus the actual quantity. And in this instance, that'll give us... Okay, you know what? That'll give us... $3. Multiplied by... 1.2 multiplied by 1 8 comma 0 0 0 subtracted by 20,000 we put this into a calculator and this gives us 48,000 I mean 4,800 dollars and it is favorable as this gives us a positive number Remember, this is $18,000. That's a pretty simple one, I guess. No real difficulty there. On to the second question. Pull it up. Whoa. Production line workers at Kent Enterprises, I guess Superman works here, Worked a total of 5,000 direct labor hours to produce 10,000 desks in April. The standard for, for producing the desk allows 24 minutes per desk at a wage rate of $10 per hour. If the actual wage rate was $11 per direct labor hour, Kent's direct labor rate variance for April was? Well, that's a pretty simple one as well. Let's clear our link here. So in this instance, it'll be like this. We know that the standard hours... is equal to the amount of units so in this case 10,000 desks we'll just use u multiplied by 24 minutes divided by 60 minutes in this case the minutes cancel each other out and we are left with Four, because when you divide by 60, you get hours, by the way. We're left with 4,000 hours. In a sense, what we did was we multiplied it and did a 
change of units. Uh, if you took chemistry one, this is super easy. Then we need actual hours. Which in this case is given to us in the question. It is 5,000 hours. And then for the standard rate, It is also given to us in the question, $10 per hour. Crazy. Now that we have that, we can get the direct labor efficiency variance. What? Okay. Efficiency variance. And this is equal to the standard rate multiplied by the standard hour minus the actual hour and when we put this into our calculator but before we do that let's actually set it up in numbers it'll be ten dollars multiplied by four thousand minus five thousand Plug this into a calculator and you will get $10,000. And since it would be a negative number if done traditionally, instead of that, we are just going to write unfavorable. Pretty easy stuff. Nothing too difficult yet. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The only part that's actually difficult, if you ask me, was chapter 5. Chapter 5 was way harder than the rest of them for no reason but other than that chapter six and seven are relatively easier when compared to chapter five and six well six also wasn't even that bad just five was super hard but now we can get on to the final question and in fact that question here the second question is probably the hardest one because the next question is even easier and this is the last one whoa Apparently this is super long. D&T Manufacturing uses an activity-based costing system for its carting department. The activity costs totals $148,000. The number of cuts is the cost driver. All right, thank you for giving us that in the question. The cutting department processed a total of 9,000 batches with an average cost, with an average cut per batch of six and total cuts of 46,250. What is the activity rate for the cutting department? Well, you see, it's actually even nicer than before. We know that the total activity cost, or TAC, is equal to $148,000. We know that the total cuts... is equal to... 46,250 cuts. So in this case, it will be units. But we don't really need to write the units right now. We know, thanks to the question, that the number of cuts is the cost driver. Therefore, the activity rate is equal to the total cost divided by total cuts. which in turn is 148,000 divided by 46,250. 46, we'll plug this into a calculator and we will get $3.20 per cut. And that's about it. It really wasn't that difficult. After this, I'm going to be uploading the Chapter 7 homework because that one just took a bit longer than I originally anticipated. Therefore, I decided to stop with Chapter 6, go to the practice problems. But next time you see me, we'll be doing the Chapter 7 homework. And I realized it was blown out of proportion. It really wasn't that hard, just time consuming.